Welcome to the Reading Forge. My name is Teresa. In this episode, we're going to ask ourselves, can a section like this in this fabulous book be read as a story? And the reason we're asking ourselves this question is because if you know the structure of what you're going to read before you read it, it makes reading it so much easier. So when I say narrative structure, story structure, I'm talking about what you probably learned in school. Something where the author gives the reader an orientation to the characters involved and to the scene involved and to where this all took place. Then the author leads the reader into a complication. You know, there's a problem, something happened that needs to be solved. Then the author gives the reader a resolution that the characters did something to solve the problem. And in a narrative, they often, the authors often end it with some sort of coda about what we learned or where we go from here. So in this little section, we've got the header already conveying the complication, land grab. And in the first paragraph, the authors tell us what this complication is. 400 million years ago, plants made the evolutionary leap from the sea to the land. Okay, in the first paragraph, they also introduce the main characters, the main character, Cooksonia. Cooksonia is the archetypal fossil, they say, the typical fossil that showcases the momentous one of the most momentous events in the history of life, the move from the sea to the land. Also in the first paragraph, they tell us that Cooksonia was named after Isabel Clifton Cookson, an Australian paleobiologist who has a, probably has a very interesting story herself, but we're not gonna talk about it here. Okay, the second paragraph sets the scene. At the time Cooksonia was, was evolving, was joining the fossil record, <laughs> the sea was a highly successful cradle of life. That's what Taylor and O'Day said, highly successful cradle of life. Lots of diverse plants and animals in the sea, but the land, they say, was a relative biological desert. They say there's some evidence of lichen on land, but for the most part, nothing like we recognize today. The third paragraph gives the reader both the complication and the resolution. The complication is surviving desiccation, surviving drying out. The most challenging threat of living out of the water is the problem of drying out, of shriveling up. And it also gives the resolution Taylor and O'Day say that under microscopic analyses of a lot of these fossils, there's evidence that these fossils could transport water and nutrients from the soil up into the body of the fossil. And this is a system that persists to this day. Modern day plants have a vascular system that allows the water to go from the soil up into the plant. The fourth paragraph tells the reader, the coda, what this all means. It says that these little discs at the top of the stalks of Cooksonia, and Cooksonia was only very little, these little discs put out spores that allowed Cooksonia to reproduce further away from itself, and that these spores made new plants, and that these plants gave oxygen to the air, and they stabilize the soil, creating the conditions, Taylor and O'Day say, over the course of 40 million years for what we, for the evolution of other plants, of other animals. Okay, remember, if you know the structure of what you're going to read before you read it, it makes reading easier. Okay, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, any criticisms, any suggestions, please put them in the comments. 
it, I encourage you again to check out this wonderful book on Google Preview or buy it yourself. And I hope to see you next time. Like and subscribe. Bye.